Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Tanla Platforms Limited conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Reto Mehta from Tanla Platforms Limited. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Hello. On behalf of everyone at Tanla, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to our investor hall. Joining with us today are Uday Reddy, Chairman and CEO, Deepak Goyal, Executive Director and Chief Business Officer, and Arvind Vishwanathan, CFO. Uday will share his insights and strategic ratios behind these acquisitions, followed by Arvind, who would dwell into financials. After opening remarks, we will be happy to engage with participants and address their questions. Before I hand it over to Uday, let me draw your attention to the fact that today's discussion may feature statements that are forward-looking in nature. All statements other than statements of historical fact would be deemed forward-looking in nature. Such statements are inherently subject to risk and uncertainty, some of which cannot be predicted or quantified. A detailed disclosure in this regard is mentioned in the presentation that was uploaded on our website. Audio recording and transcript will be available on website soon. Now I hand it over to Uday. Thank you, Ritu. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, thanks everyone for joining the call. I'm sure you have seen our presentation on value first acquisition and I'm very excited about the opportunity here. While I will ask Arvind to take you through the acquisition details, let me share my thoughts on the acquisition and what it means to Tanda and CPAS industry in general. So the past two years, I've been asked three questions consistently on the, on the enterprise business. First has been the implications of global giants with large balance sheets entering the Indian market. I've been consistently maintaining that India is in the unique market, is a unique market. To succeed in India, what one needs to know local knowledge, uh, I mean, one needs deep, uh, deep local knowledge, ability to work with the uh, entire ecosystem from enterprises to mobile carriers, and deep domain knowledge. This is a secret source of our success. Acquiring value first from Filio is a validation of this long-standing belief. The second question has been a competitive dynamics due to ATEL competing with C plus players in India, largely around pricing. While there is a certain amount of disruption when Airtel made this entry, I think industry has stayed raised over the past 12 months. Airtel is both a competitor and partner, and I think the ecosystem has learned the art of coexistence. I think the phase of market disruption is behind us. As we gain the scale with the value first acquisition, with the overall cheapest market share of 35% plus, we recognize that we have a major role to play to drive responsible industry conduct. We take the responsibility very, very seriously. The third question has been around international expansion. Valley First is, is a player in Dubai and Saudi and making inroads into Indonesia. We will leverage this acquisition to significantly scale our international operations, both on platform and enterprise business. So in many ways, this acquisition has addressed the key questions asked to me. Why? So why does this acquisition make sense for us? I see five strong reasons. One, a significant bargaining power in sourcing. Value first will help us with a further bargaining power in sourcing. We were always larger. Now we have become larger, largest rather. The competency, sorry, uh, the second point is complementary customer base. Our India customer footprint is very complementary. We have 50% share in large enterprise segment, and now value first brings in 20% share in SME segments. Customers contributing 40% of the acquired entities, revenues are net new to us. Value first will cross-sell and upsell to our customers and vice versa. Point number three, 
drive strong operating efficiencies. We looked at their financials in detail as part of the due diligence. I see IT significant headroom on efficiencies on both in that direct indirect cost. We have clarity on where we can add value and improve. The fourth point is cultural fit. We have a strong relationship with both Value First and Filio. And Filio believes we are a natural partner to house Value First employees and customers. Last but not least is talent. It is, it is not easy to build talent with a deep expertise in this space. Vish and his team have a tremendous domain knowledge and we will leverage this. They have a strong platform called Server, which we can use for our customers. In summary, we have an incredible track record on acquisitions. We bought Carrots and Deepak and his team has helped EBITDA grow from 25 crores to around 500 crores in the last four years. The same team which delivered the value at Carrex will work with Value First team to unlock the value for our shareholders. Now I will ask Arvind to take you through the deal construct and financial implications. Thanks, Uday. Uh, good evening, everyone. Let me quickly give you an overview of the acquisitions that we announced. Uh, we announced two acquisitions. Right? The first one we signed, we signed a definitive agreement to acquire 100% of Value First India from Helio for a consideration of $42 million, which translates the current exchange rate for around 346 crores, subject to upward closing adjustment between two and a half million to three and a half million dollars due to the net cash in the business. We expect to close this transaction by early July 2023. And we should see the full consolidation of this entity in our Q2 numbers. We also signed a binding term sheet to acquire 100% of value first Middle East uh, from their existing shareholders for a cumulative consideration of 20 crores for a combination of primary investment and a secondary purchase from existing shareholders. This entity addresses the markets of UAE, Saudi, and Indonesia. We expect to close this acquisition in September 23. And we will see the full consolidation of this entity in our Q3 numbers. We are funding this purchase consideration from our internal accruals. We are incentivizing the management team of value first for both performance and retention with a 50 crore RSU grant in value first, which will vest over a two year period. The overall revenues of both of these acquisitions combined is around 950 crores. As Uday mentioned, Value First is an existing customer of ours. So if I adjust for that intercompany, the net incremental revenue to Panela platforms would be around 650 crores. The combined EBITDA of the acquired entities is around 50 crores. Today, Value First operates at around 5% EBITDA levels. EBITDA for Panla in Q4, we exited a 523 at around 20% EBITDA. And if we just consolidate on a like for like basis, the dilution due to the acquisition would be around 2%. Our plan is to mitigate this impact by improving the value first EBITDA from current levels of around 5% to double digits in the next two to three quarters. We have a solid plan on this. Would I reference it in terms of the efficiencies that we see? And that's the focus for us from a profitability standpoint. We expect to mitigate the entire impact of the EBITDA margin dilution by the end of the financial year. Overall, this is a very attractive acquisition from a valuation standpoint. We are acquiring an entity at 7x EBITDA multiple for a business which is operating at very, very low EBITDA levels. As we execute our plan on driving synergistic growth both in India and overseas, coupled with our focus on margin expansion, we see significant value creation through this acquisition. Now I would, you know, ask the operator to open the floor for any questions and we'll be happy between Uday, Deepak and myself to address any of them. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. 
Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use the handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time. The first question is from the line of Anil Nahata, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Hey, Anil, go on. Uh, of the international, um, in terms of the geographies that they are having, because the slide gives a breakup of around 153 crores, whereas the revenue is around uh, 300 crores, if I understand right. Yeah. So, Anil, let me clarify that, right? That is the NLB business in those respective geographies, okay, which includes the Tanla number. That is more to give you a sense of what is the domestic business that they do with local enterprises, okay? Okay. But they also do uh, global business and IND business out of these entities. So, so we are breaking it down. We will give you further details post the acquisition in terms of the kind of business that they do. But we wanted to specifically call out uh, see, there is a difference between serving a market and, you know, the entity being used to book revenues, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, you could book a global-to-global -global revenue in a Dubai entity or a Saudi entity. So, we were specifically That's carving out what is the mm -hmm. local business that we do, and that local business for the combined group would be about 153 crores, where about 100 mm -hmm. crores comes from value first, and about 50 crores mm -hmm. comes from Canada. Canada was only present in UAE. A value first is present all three geographies. Great, Arvind. Thank you for that. And can you also give some sort of uh, the uh, range around which the margins for the domestic business in the overseas uh, countries is there and the Indian margin for value first? So, if you ask me, the, the margins on the overseas business today is a little lower, Anil, right? It's probably break even or slightly 1%, 2%, you know. Mm -hmm. And India is a little higher at about 7%, 6.5%, 7%. So, you're giving at the EBITDA level? Yes, I'm giving at the EBITDA level. Okay, fair enough. Uh, 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 my third question around this line says, of course, it may be a bit early to ask this question, but I would still leave it with you. Now that Uday has said that uh, one of the large concerns that has been raised by the shareholders community is about the international expansions. And value step first can be a good step behind beyond what Tanla was already doing in UAE in terms of getting into deeper into the uh, KSA and Indonesia. I mean, what kind of a plan we can see from uh, Tanla over the next one or two years? Can we look at an uh, international revenue base of 10%, 20% of the overall revenue? I mean, some sort of thought process would be, I'm not even asking guidance, I'm saying what kind of a thought process can be there? So, you know, Anil, as you said, right, you know, it, uh, we've not even integrated the entities, right? But Correct, clearly, absolutely. we see a huge opportunity. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. We see clearly a huge opportunity. In fact, we've been talking about Saudi quite a bit, right? Uh, we've been talking about Far East Asia quite a bit, right? And the market sizes there are very, very large, okay? So, the idea, obviously, and I think Uday kind of mentioned this, is not just look at these geographies only from an enterprise side, but even from a platform side. So, the, the expectations and internal workings are quite aggressive, uh, Anil, but, uh, you know, it, it can be substantial, but maybe I will wait to kind of uh, have a much more detailed down plan in terms of what we are doing before I kind of commit what kind of percentages it can be. Okay, I know it's ahead of time, and, uh, I mean, Arvind, if you are okay, can I ask more questions or should I come back in the queue? No, I would suggest we come back because I think there is a queue list, right? So, you know, once Fair enough. everybody is done, if we have time. Absolutely. Fair enough. Thank you. Thanks, sir. The next question is from the line of Deepak Chokhani from Breed Capital Partners. Please go ahead. Hi, Uday and Tanda team. Congrats on this uh, acquisition. Uh, great move, which will surely solidify Tanla's pole position in India. 
I have two questions. Uh, first is, I understand value first is largely into enterprise business. So just want to understand, given Tanla's uh, uh, foray into YP platforms and other business, what could be the cross-sell opportunity to value first customers more on the platform business side, number one. Number two, you mentioned that the international businesses can grow two, two and a half times in few months. Is that like few months? Uh, I mean, can you throw some light on this? And the third is 50 crore EBITDA is on 950 crores or 650 crores? So let me answer the third question first. The 50 crore EBITDA is on 950 crores, right? The, the, see, the, the EBITDA doesn't change because of uh, intercompany, only the revenue changes. Okay, both organizations keep their profit. It's just that the consolidated revenue comes up. That is why, you know, you will feel that adjustment happens only at the revenue line, but not at the EBITDA line. So that, that's my first uh, point, right? Uh, the second question is in terms of the... Yeah, yeah, so platforms. Oh, I, I did not try. Um, so different, basically, like, a couple of things. Like, one is, um, for example, um, in India alone, um, uh, only 50% of their traffic comes on to our, our TLD platform. Uh, remaining 50% uh, goes to our, uh, our competitors. So now going forward, probably from tomorrow or after tomorrow, I think I 100% of traffic uh, comes to our TLD platform. That's a, that's a, that was a, that's a number one, right? So number two is what we noticed is 40% of their their their, uh, their revenues are net new to us. Okay, so we are listing down uh, all these their clients uh, uh, and uh, we are also working on uh, how how to upsell and cross sell uh, some of our uh, carrots and Carlas uh, services to these customers. So we are, we, we are pretty excited and uh, we see a huge value there. Uh, uh, and of course, um, in Dubai also, like you know, uh, we have been operating for the last two years, we have reasonably big. We also see the three opportunity over there, like in the sense like, we have our own customers and they have their own set of customers in Dubai. So there is a clear opportunity for us to upsell and cross sell them. So um, it's only beginning, there's a long way to go, uh, but, but uh, we are very, very excited about this uh, uh, opportunity. Perfect, sir. Thank you. Uh, just my uh, one question which uh, remains, uh, the 2, 3x uh, growth in few months uh, in the international expansion. Uh, can you throw some light on this, sir? Sure. So, when it comes to the NLB business that we specifically talked about, especially where we have geographies like Indonesia, where we have just made an entry, and if you look at that slide deck, right, you have a significant headroom because it's a very, very large market, right? So, what we are planning, right, is to see how do we accelerate the growth in some of those geographies where we can quickly turn around and get a quick uptake. Obviously, we will assess in more details, but that's the kind of potential we are seeing there. Right. So, so that is our approach specifically in these geographies where the base is small and we feel that if we can put our full might and our investments behind it, the, the opportunity to scale up that specific segment is very, very high. Okay. All the best. Thank you so much. Thanks, Deepak. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Meet Raj from Anubhuti Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on the transaction. So, first question is in terms of margins. So, in slide number 16 of the presentation, we have mentioned that uh, there's an opportunity to improve 140, 150 basis points on consolidated basis. So, just wanted to know uh, this is on the Q4 exit rate or the FI23 average of 18%. So I kind of talked about this uh, in my in my uh, you know opening remarks, right? So what we are saying, right? And of course, it, it is both uh, in a way, you know, it's, it is to say that uh, our exit margin is around twenty percent. Okay, we have an ability. I mean, if you take the entire impact of the value first, the impact is about two hundred basis points roughly, right? 
and we are saying over the 12 month period as it exists, we will kind of get that dilution back largely through the improvement in value per EBITDA, right, which we have talked about. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, second question is in terms of uh, the business which we had earlier with uh, uh, value first. So can you uh, elaborate uh, what was the business we were doing with uh, value first for last last ten years? So you know, Tanda has always been a very large platform provider, right? We've been a large platform provider, and we have served all of our big CPAP players. Right, because our platforms are deployed at the telco end and our customers, our Tanla historically has been with the CPAS providers, right, in the end So, in fact, interestingly, you know, when we bought Carix, Carix was probably one of the original largest customer of Tanla at that time. So, Tanla has been serving, uh, you know, the CPAS players, right, from, from inception. So, that's the kind of service. So, it's typical A2P messaging service where, you know, we, we, we deploy, I mean, they send the messages and we run it through our, our platforms in the telco. Okay, okay, okay. Fine, that's it for my show. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Chandra from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is on the synergy benefits. So sir, you mentioned that uh, there is obviously like a lot of synergy benefits that you see. So if you can uh, you know, tell me what are the immediate uh, kind of synergy benefits uh, you know, we'll see and what are the you know, long to medium term synergy benefits. And also, you know, you mentioned about the uh, you know, pricing benefit that you know, we can get as a, as a larger entity. So if you can throw some light on that. And also if I see uh, you know, the, um, the gross margins for both the entities, they're mostly the same, so the and also the difference is mostly on the EBITDA margin from. So the margin benefit we are talking about is it through gross margin expansion or uh, through like cutting the cost uh, at the tariff level? Sorry, at the uh, value first level. Sorry. Sure, okay. So let me give you uh, my view, and you know I'll request on the uh, Deepak to add on, right? So what we are saying clearly is. I mean, the first point is at an integrated level, you know, the, the gross margin of uh, Tanla is upwards of 25%, right? For the year, it's 27% as we exit, right? And uh, it's much lower for uh, for uh, value first, right? It, it, there is no dilution in gross margin because, you know, when we do the consolidation in many ways, the intercompany revenue knocks off, but the gross margin remains. So there is a significant gap in terms of the gross margin. Now, two, three elements there, Amit. One clearly is the sourcing cost because, you know, there is a benefit that we can get as far as that is concerned. Two is, and I think Uday mentioned it, you know, you have a cross leverage through platforms that, uh, you know, you have the benefit of, you know, you have, you have multiple of our platforms that are deployed, not all of Valifers traffic goes through that. So we will definitely create some downstream benefit there. There will be certain indirect cost synergies that we will identify and we've already identified and we will execute on that, right? So I, I don't think, you know, the business is very different for us to operate at very different margin levels. That's the hypothesis that we are starting with. And obviously with synergies around platform, et cetera, that they do not have, uh, but, you know, we can get the benefit of that. You know, it, it is easy for us to kind of drive the profit. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, you know, in terms of the customer overlaps, obviously, you know, you have given very clearly uh, where the overlaps are. But uh, if you can you know, also quantify to you know, uh, what you know, could be the overlap in terms of revenues and you know, how do you see uh, you know, these individual customers, you know, which are common uh, you know, uh, in, in terms of spending, uh, if 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 they were with both the entities. So Deepak, would you want to comment on it? But I can give some numbers, right? But from a concept perspective, if you want to give your color, right? Uh, sure. Sure. And I can I can provide you. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, 
See, it's like this. Uh, we, we, we have overlapped with some customers, and they are uh, pretty large customers. Uh, but we don't see any any uh, risk whatsoever. Uh, you know, the, the reason the primary reason is in, uh, is that you know the two separate platforms. So why 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 don't I I cover that amid till Deepak uh, joins back, right? See, one point what we have mentioned is 40% of value first revenues uh, is customers who are making you through Canada, right? So to that extent, that gives you a sense, right? The balance of revenues are obviously having an overlap. No, not all overlap necessarily is bad, right? We we have a situation where you know we can coexist. That that is not an issue. We retaining the brand, so to that extent, it's not that you know two of them will combine into one. So we don't see an issue. But what will happen is a huge ability to cross sell upsell that Uday also talked about in his opening remark, right? That we will have with customers, uh, and that's where we see a big opportunity. So, I know why I was trying to understand this bit. And as you said, that 60% is overlap. So that's a big overlap, right? So uh, any uh, risk you see to that in terms of some uh, know, customer uh, know, scaling down uh, in one entity or you know, some uh, any 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 kind of risk that you see in the overlap. So that's what I was trying to understand. Deepak, are there? Mr. Line is in top mode. Okay, I mean, let, let Deepak come back and answer that. Let me know if we can go ahead with other questions. I'm, I'm there. Yeah, Deepak, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry, yeah, Deepak. Deepak, go ahead. Ar- Arvind, Arvind would, would you please clarify about the 60% overlap thing? Yeah, so I think the question, Deepak, that Amit wants is where there is an overlap, do we see a risk of customer pushing out either of the players, right? Is there a risk that we will lose revenues because of whatever overlap we have? And I just kind of gave a headline saying we don't see that risk, but maybe you may want to elaborate a little bit on that. No, right. Uh, you know, uh, first of all, uh, Arvind, it is not a 60% overlap of our business between Carex and uh, uh, and Value First, right? It's a... So from a revenue standpoint, it, 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 we did that. So it, it is 60%. It is then 40% is net new. But what I mean by that is where we have even one message goes, right? We call it overlap, right? So so you may not feel that it's an overlap, but it is. It is just a yeah. percent standpoint. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I mean to answer to your question, in fact, uh, we have done this exercise, okay, and how it works is. Uh, a customer usually have uh, minimum two or more than two providers, okay? Maybe three or four. Large customer usually have three or four providers. Usually the large customers, Carrick has about uh, uh, 45 to 50% share, wallet share, others have maybe 20, 30 or so on, right? Uh, as we see it is that uh, for the customer, there are two separate platforms uh, hosted in different uh, geographies, different data centers, and uh, and our business is services business is it's very people oriented. So customers are uh, used to of dealing with a certain set of uh, you know uh, you know uh, people in a, in a particular uh, provider. So all, if you if you look all of that, I don't see any risk. In fact, we see a huge opportunity where we can actually uh, you know enter into value first customers. Okay, where we are not present. And value first can come as another provider uh, to uh, our customers where uh, they are not present, right? So I am looking at uh, you know uh, uh, at a you know, uh, opportunity where we can uh, look for uh, incremental business rather. Okay. And uh, so last question is on the on the retention program that we have. So can you please throw some more light on uh, on how it is structured? Is it only for top management or it is across? Uh, all employees uh, for the early first day and uh, how the how the how the payouts. So we've talked. No, no. So we we doing an RSU plan. We'll probably cover top 20, 25 employees there, right? With a with a focused view on how to retain. So we we have an RSU plan for about six rows in value first, right? So and that will rest over a two year period uh, for driving both retention as well as performance, right? So that that is really how the uh, the incentive plan is structured, uh, Amit. Okay, sir. Thank you, and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Participants to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Mohit Motwani from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on the transaction. Uh, I have a question on around, you know, uh, can you give some sense, you know, on what led to, you know, Twilio selling value first? Uh, you know, I understand that, you know, Twilio works with you as well. Uh, but I believe that, you know, they wanted to enter India, which is a fast growing market, and that's the reason they had gone the acquisition way. And they ended up acquiring, uh, acquiring value first. But what has led to, you know, them selling uh, the business? And uh, and that also at a relatively lower valuations. Uh, it's good from Tala's perspective that you know you are getting and you know you can turn around and you know scale and gain more market share. But just wanted to get some color on that if you can do it. Thank you so much. <coughs> Mohit uh, Uday here. Um, we cannot really comment on behalf of uh, uh, Twilio, uh, but we are very very excited. We understand this market well. We understand this terrain very well. Um, uh, so we have been working with uh, um, um, uh, Value First one decade. So we are pretty excited. So I know why they left and why they why why they sold it at uh, loss. Uh, we cannot really answer those questions. This completely left to Twitter. Sure. And uh, uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Mo. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sharad Kohli, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, I, I have a, a basically three questions, actually two questions and one suggestion. Uh, the first question I have is uh, in terms of this industry consolidation. So Carrix was number one, uh, Value First was number four. So they have become part of Panda over the last two, three years. You basically have three uh, sizable players left now, right? Besides uh, Kanla now, which is Root, Gupshop, and ACT, which is Sync. My question is in terms of uh, negotiating uh, your share of the cut from the telcos, does this make the CFAS players in a better position to get a higher percentage of the revenue share from telcos? Uh, that's my first question. The second question I have is more on the uh, stats that you gave on the TAN on the Asian markets. Um, the first clarification I have is, is the Indonesian market led by CPAS players like Panda, or is it uh, uh, kind of like the Airtel model where the uh, CPAS divisions of the telcos uh, control the market for the most case? And I'm, I'm trying to get an understanding of how easy or difficult it might be for a standalone CPAS player to kind of make inroads if, in fact, the telcos are the ones that control the CPAS market. And my last one, just given that we are absorbing so much data on the uh, different uh, markets, mid-market versus large, large markets, one suggestion I would like to offer is when you guys present your numbers for uh, Q, Q1, is there a slide you can show where we look at each of Kanla's five businesses, uh, whether it's engage or communicate everything, if you can just do a matrix, maybe a three by four matrix or a four by four matrix, where you say here are divisions, here's the, uh, here's which market we cater to, here's where our share in that market of revenue share of the market is, and here are the drivers of those markets, whether it comes from startups or BFSI, whatever it is, because it, it just makes it easier to understand which segments each of Tanla's uh, five divisions claim in terms of just modeling out potential revenues and if you can also disclose TAM numbers for each of those revenues. That's it from my side. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> in terms of the second question, uh, what I can say is like, you know, if you look at uh, any marketing, including conditions in Asia, it is completely driven by the aggregators or the CFAS uh, of uh, the players. Uh, not necessarily by the mobile carrier. So, so it's a custom in, in every market, including India and other markets, right? So it's not different from 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 any other market. So that's number one. Uh, what is the first source thing? Huh? It's on, in terms. Yeah, of definitely it, it would it would it would it would help us. Um, uh, uh, even now we have the better better uh, um, better uh, 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 access to the uh, telcos, and and with this acquisition, like definitely that. So we have more power to negotiate harder with the telcos. In terms of the metrics, yes, definitely we'll consider that. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Ritu Mehta for closing comments. Thank you, everyone. That was the last question for today. In case we could not take your questions due to time constraints, please be free to reach out to our investor relations team. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Tala Platforms Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.